super exciting updates by Google announced that ISTE 2025 Gemini is coming to Google Workspace. And in a big way, it is bringing more than 30 tools and you get access regardless of the edition that you are on. So even if and when you're using Google Workspace for Education Fundamentals, you will get access to these tools. And where are they going? Well, they are coming into Google Classroom. So in this video, we're going to have a first hands-on look at these tools and I'm going to demo some of them live for you right now. So let's jump onto the computer. Here you can see I'm in my Google Classroom. On the left hand side, you'll see a new tab and this is the Gemini Education. When I click on that, you get that list of all these new tools. You can see we have outline a lesson plan, write a story, brainstorm project ideas. We can generate text dependent questions. We have vocabulary lists, translating text, re-leveling text, anything you could possibly need that you may be using a different service for right now, many AI systems out there, can now be fully integrated within Workspace for Education. In other words, your data is secure. The same standards as your Gmail and other services are adhered to using Gemini within Google Classroom. So yet another reason to simplify that suite of tools that you use and just stick to Google Workspace. Now let's have a look at what it can do. We're going to start with this lesson plan. Let's outline a lesson plan. Now I need a target grade and I need to describe the topic and the standards that I want to teach. So for example, I'm going to target grade six and the topic will be key people in the history of computer science. Now I could be adding in learning objectives and goals and targets. For now, I'm going to keep it vague just to demo. And I'm going to say, I just want to talk about these key people in computer science. Now I can upload my own text or data and information as well. This is great for say an English lesson where you have looked at a chapter of a book or maybe you've looked at a text where you can upload that text, give Google Gemini, Gemini within education access to it and then it will use that to generate the lesson plan. So an amazing feature to have. Right now I'm not uploading so I'm just going to generate those learning objectives. Gemini is going to get to work and within a few seconds, I get my learning objectives. Now, as you can see here, I've got students are able to identify at least two key individuals and they can describe one major achievement. I want to tweak this a little bit. Let's say that two is not enough. I want it to be three key individuals and they can describe two major achievements of each of the key individuals identified. Then we can describe our class. This is where we give a little bit more context because if it is going to generate a lesson plan, it makes sense for the AI to really know what do I have access to? Do I have a Mac suite, PCs? Do they have access to iPads? Is it BYOD? Is it school provided? So here you can give all that access. So I'm going to say the majority of students are EAL learners. We have access to computers, these are Windows devices, and also Mac suites. We have about 20 students per class. There we go. Let's give it that context and let's see what it can create. Generate that lesson plan. Gemini is going to get to work. It really is very quick. You'll see here within even less than a minute, I'll have a fully fleshed out learning plan. There we go. This is our lesson plan. Pioneers of the digital age. You can see we have an overview. We have the materials needed. So here it makes it very clear Windows or Mac because I did say that. We'll need a projector or interactive whiteboard, a handout with the names of those pioneers, Ada Lovelace, Charles Babbage, Alan Turing, Grace Hopper, Tim Berners-Lee, Catherine Johnson, all those names are there. And then the preparation. Now, one thing I really like about Gemini is that it was developed with education in mind. So here you can see some common misconceptions are tackled right at the start of your lesson. So here we can see one, two, three different misconceptions and then how you can respond to those. So we have the strategic surfacing or we have the in the moment response. This is great for newer teachers or maybe it's a new subject or a new area of learning that you're not as confident with. Well, this will help you prepare. So we've got that there. And then the activities. Who are these people? 
a deep dive, connecting threads, and some assessments and exit tickets. Now we can modify this. So we can start having this back and forth with the AI to improve this lesson plan. You also get a couple of suggestions. For example, provide scaffolding support in each activity, incorporate UDLs, or provide three alternative activities for this lesson. I'm going to ask for more scaffolding. So you can see the activities are pretty fleshed out, but I want a bit more scaffolding. So let's go ahead and provide some more scaffolding. Let's go back to Gemini. Gemini is now going to jump back into this lesson plan, tweak it, improve it, and present me with a full lesson plan, including that extra scaffolding. So here, as we scroll down, you can see we have this extra scaffolding. Representation of scaffolding, name of the person. There we go. What are they known for? This, because, that. So it gives you everything you need as a teacher. Scrolling all the way down, I can now use this plan and I can generate a quiz based on this, or I can create more hooks, or I can find even relevant video resources. In other words, incredibly powerful, all built within Google Classroom. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm going to export this. So I'm going to click on export, and this lets me export this entire lesson plan into a Google Docs. It's exporting it into Google Docs, and here it is. Google Docs has my full lesson plan and I can get started. You can see that I have my scaffolding here and all the activities. My lesson plan is ready to go. Let's jump back into our Google Classroom and let's generate a quiz. We're going to generate a quiz. This is going to be the same target audience, the same topic, the same subject, same learning objectives. Now we can choose the question types here so we can have multiple choice, true or false, short answer. Let's go with true or false. This is an easier one and let's generate those questions. Again, Gemini gets to work. Within seconds, I have my quiz. Ada Lovelace is often called the first computer programmer because she wrote the first algorithm intended to be processed by a machine. True or false? Match the computer scientist with one of the we get a couple of questions. We've got three questions here. I'm okay with this. So let's go ahead and click on export. And now this is where the real power of Google Classroom comes in. We can export this to forms. So no more manual copy pasting straight into forms, export to forms. These questions are put into the forms with the correct sort of question type. And here it is. Everything has been exported into a Google form. We have our questions. It's already put the questions in there. The correct answer is already selected. A huge time saver. Here again, you can see this quiz is prepared for me. Now, if I wanted a longer quiz, well, I could go back here and I could ask it for more questions. Let's have 10 questions all together. And we can send this off, send it to Gemini. Gemini is going to take that input back and forth. And here we go. We now have 10 questions for my quiz and I can export it into a forms. These are just two examples of how Gemini is completely transforming the Google Classroom experience for you and for your students. Now, have a look on your Google Classroom as soon as it's rolled out. It is going to take a few weeks before everyone has access, but everyone will eventually get access to Gemini education within their Google Classroom environment. I'm going to go back to my lesson plan and I am going to have a look at some other examples. So here you can see we can generate quiz. We just looked at that. We can re-level text. I really like this because what it allows you to do is take a text found online and drop the level for your EAL learners or maybe increase the difficulty to really challenge those top high level potential learners in your class. We can craft a compelling hook for our class, tackle those misconceptions, build a choice board. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and build a choice board. So I'm going to type this. This is going to be for a grade two class. And the topic is going to be, let's go with a science topic. Let's go with micro habitats. There we go. And we are going to generate learning objectives. So the only information I've given it is that it's a grade two class and micro habitats. There we go. They can learn some, um, they can name some examples, describe one way a small animal might use this. Let's generate our choice board. It's generating it for me. And here it is. We have four choices, a micro safari scavenger hunt, approximate time, what is needed, my micro home, the activity, how long it can take, 
what is needed, story time, and a diorama. If I want this, I can add it to my class or I can export it to docs. Now I'm not going to export to docs, I'm going to add it to my class. So let's go ahead and click on add to class. Let's select our flipped classroom demo class and let's set this as an assignment. We're going to set it as an assignment, confirm. This is being exported to docs and automatically attached to the assignment and pushed out to my classroom. Again, huge time saver. It sets everything up the way that it needs to be set up. We have our title here, we'll just fill that in and the choice board has been added with students able to view the file. Now you can always open this to see what it looks like and here it is, everything is already formatted just as I'd like it. And then I can simply assign this to my students. Now, these updates are huge. It's a really big update coming to Google Workspace announced at ISTE 2025. Now, if you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below how you might use this. I also want to say a quick thank you to all our channel members. They get early access to all my videos. And thank you to the Patreon supporters who get ad-free access to all my videos as well as some additional perks. If you'd like to join either the YouTube channel members or the Patreon family, find the links down below and I would love to have you there as well. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.